spoke to 10,000 customers even before launching a product and since then we've spoken with 100,000 more customers in addition to the feedback that we get through our products and our call centers and constant uh, contact with the customer i think the crux of it is that customers they want transparency and it's not so surprising that according to a 2018 survey financial services is the least trusted industry among global consumers and has been for some time so the uh, pattern to be disrupted is transparency and passing the value to the customer so we at goldman sachs saw this as a perfect opportunity and said we'll change the rules of the game we want customers to have tremendous experience that they would expect from any service and uh, traditionally banks are organized by product right and each product is trying to be profitable and justify the existence to the company and doing so by building in fees high rates etc we know that we can be profitable at a customer level if we really treat them fairly and meet their needs if we do that we will earn their loyalty we will have a greater share of their wallet and we will grow as the customer grows so we are building our products in a hope that we will meet customers saving investing spending and borrowing needs and we hope to become their trusted advisor this last unmet need of the customer is optimize they want to know that if they got another dollar what should they do with it and think about it today would they get this advice that pay down the loan that you are carrying with us first before you invest your money somewhere else and we want to get to that place where customers trust us because we give them advice which is on their side and that's the kind of relationship we are striving for things are changing so fast you know in fact i think of it as pace of change today is the slowest it's ever going to be so you know rapid rapid change uh the world has already gone digital and we see that accelerating even more today over the last decade technology has dramatically changed the way we think about uh accessing products not just financial services but retail transport transportation healthcare and more consumers want their product to be fast secure and easily accessible from the comfort of their homes you know whether it is in their car uh, also you know they want it on their devices wherever they are so in some ways financial services has been slower to keep pace with this change and uh, consumers have a high bar for the experience the ease of use and pandemic is only showing how the digital adoption of financial services has increased and for a business like ours it's a big tailwind the second pattern that is quite interesting uh, is that consumers want to shop with brands that reflect their values in a survey i saw that 70% of us consumers believe it is more important than ever to buy from companies that reflect their values and this is increasingly important for younger consumers 60% of millennials are more likely to buy from a brand that they associate with a cause so this means that companies need to think about the impact they have on communities and make that part of their offering their value proposition and how they communicate with the customers you know customers financial lives have become fragmented right and decisions end up being one service one product at a time and decisions end up being suboptimal so one uh, you know technological uh innovation or uh, application we need to see is using data science to help them optimize their financial life streamline spending saving borrowing and investing decisions no matter where they did it most customers um you know shop spend borrow where it's convenient to them so through extensible platforms we need to be where the customer is and we at goldman sachs are embedding the best of our capabilities into the ecosystem of large and innovative companies to refine financial service offerings 
We have partnerships with Apple, JetBlue, AARP, Amazon, Walmart, and we'll continue to expand this partnership so that customers get to choose how they want to consume financial services. You know, the, the disruption trend almost started 10 years ago, right? Lending and payments were first, and they still have room for innovation and disruption. If you look at payments in particular, customers are increasingly looking to pay in digital methods, and COVID has reinforced that trend. According to McKinsey, consumers use two plus types of digital payment methods, uh, and that number jumped from 45% in 2019 to 58% in 2020. So even in that part of financial services where all of this change started 10 years ago, things are still getting uh, disrupted. Robo-investing and neo-banking started later. Uh, mortgages, insurance, et cetera, are still lagging. And digital assets and other asset classes, including crypto, NFT, they're digitally native, but inherently unfamiliar, and hence have been harder to mainstream, but that's changing too. So across the board, I expect that we will continue to see disruption across all of these categories. Things are changing rapidly, right? And we can't predict five years from now what the world will look like, right? Five years ago, we would have never imagined we'll be where we are today. But what I do know is that future of finance will be rooted in extreme customer centricity. One area that we think would make life easier for consumers is increased consolidation in financial relationships or increased visibility and interoperability rather than inefficient walled gardens. Think about it, right? A few decades ago, consumers had one primary relationship with their local bank. And then over time, technology and innovation increased the number of options that consumers had in their financial services providers. And that was great. Right? It created a lot more value for the customer. But at the same time, it has created confusion. And it takes a great deal of manual effort to manage relationships with 10 plus providers. Consumers tell us that they still prefer to use a single financial institution for most of their needs. So the more that uh, can make it easy to access bring it in one place, build technology that is able to scale, but partner with multiple providers, the better we can meet consumers' needs. They don't want to spend time on just managing the number of relationships. They just want good value. Partnerships and bringing different uh, strengths together to create great end products works as a solution. Right? There, Fintechs and uh, the companies bring, you know, impeccable focus on delightful customer experiences. And there is a lot of uh, uh, strength that exists in financial services companies in risk management, compliance, uh, underwriting, data, uh, experience, uh, connection with infrastructure, and the combination of these, as long as it works for the customer, is good. It creates the competition. It creates the room for uh, pushing the boundaries. At Marcus, we are approaching it in a way where we want to put our products directly in front of the customer and continue to innovate on that delightful customer experience and build direct relationships. And at the same time, build capabilities which can be embedded in um, other ecosystems and at the same time become a platform where fintech and their products which we are not going to manufacture can also be surfaced to the customers so uh, these kind of synergistic partnerships will be the future and i think that's a trend to be encouraged and um, you know ultimately used to give the best offers to the customers. I do see that there is regulatory arbitrage in the beginning for smaller companies because there is less oversight. But I feel very strongly that regulatory arbitrage only works while you are small. Eventually, 
it has to be that um, regulation controls compliance is respected and incorporated inside the product. So I think of this as um, startups should get culturally great at risk and compliance. You can get big in the beginning, but eventually pause and correct. Because the goal of regulators is the same as goal of the companies, which is fairness uh, and equitable products. And I think creatively using technology to meet that goal is in everyone's interest. And I think that cultural thinking that it has to be done. You know, the companies that have scaled and grown have shown that they can do a um, good job at risk management and compliance management.